Salve, salve galera da High BPM. Estamos aqui iniciando um novo projeto chamado Talking High, onde nós vamos e mais profundamente na vida dos artistas da cena Psytrance nacional e internacional. A ideia aqui é sair totalmente da caixa, daquele tipo de pergunta comum e clichê que a gente vê em todo o festival, e sim entender quem que é o nome a pessoa por trás do artista. E hoje a gente tem um convidado muito especial que merece toda uma introdução para a gente poder recebê-lo aqui com a maneira que ele merece. Ele foi eleito em 2012 pela revista People, o 17º colocado em todos os artistas de Psytrance do mundo. E já recebeu apoio de Armin Van Buren, Paul Oakenfold, Astrix, Vinnie Vitt e muitos outros. Ele também tem três faixas que já alcançaram o top 1 do Beatport, incluindo o esmagador hit no Brasil, Harmony. Ele é o produtor número 1 um do seu país em todos os gêneros de música eletrônica e foi premiado pela Unesco na Grécia por sua contribuição na divulgação da herança musical grega. Ele também é proprietário da 1DB Records e também fundador da família oficial Trans Family na Grécia. Todos nós sabemos, pelas essas dicas que eu dei aqui, por essa toda essa introdução, de quem que eu tô falando. Mas será que você conhece realmente quem é Tassos Antônios? Esse é o nosso convidado de hoje, do Talking High, High Profile. Hello Tassos, how are you? I'm good man, thank you for having me here. We are so happy to you receive us in your apartment here in Sao Paulo. So, Tassos, uh, you are here in Sao Paulo uh, in your new tour. Uh, what is your expectation about this tour this moment in Sao Paulo? Basically, this is the last days of the tour. I'm here from uh, 13th of September and I'm going to leave in five days. So, the expectations are, are high already because I have already played in six, seven events. And I have three more this weekend, so um, yeah, that's it basically. Basically, all I want now is to go home. You know, I'm <laughs> counting days like the prisoner inside the house, uh, removing days that I'm returning back home. So yeah, that's it. And we are talking about a tour. Uh, what is the worst thing in a tour? Well, the worst thing is being away from from the home. You know, from family. This is the worst thing uh, for me, at least. Um, Uh, the waiting basically is the worst thing, you know, waiting in uh, hotel rooms, uh, waiting in the airport, waiting to play, waiting for someone to come to take you for, uh, for a food or, or to take you uh, to go to a party or, or somewhere, you know, waiting is always the worst thing in a tour. Um, for me, the worst thing all these years was being away from my family, that was the worst thing, especially now that I'm one month here, you know. So I think you have uh, your heart, part of your heart is in Greece with a family. Yeah, basically not part of the heart, but the whole heart <laughs> is there. <laughs> really, the whole thing. Yeah, but you know, I'm focused here. You know, my mind is here. You know, the heart is in Greece, but my mind is here because it's work. So I'm focused 100% when I'm playing, uh, when I'm working uh, here in the apartment, uh, making music or making some arrangements, you know, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's go deep in our, yeah. in our, please, in our life, please, personally. Please, please. Recently, we have a son, like Dimitri, his na the name? Yeah, it's Dimitri, yeah. And how is your life in Greece? So, uh, in Brazil, uh, your fans uh, think uh, you are only a DJ and the, the people don't know how yeah, is it's, the, it's uh, don't understand you have a, a, a normal life. Basically the profile that we're selling uh, as DJs is always um, the, the job profile, you know, the work that we're doing. That we are not, most of the DJs that I know, they don't um, post, promote uh, their personal life, you know. Even I have done it sometimes, but I don't do it often. Uh, life now with Dimitris has changed totally because, you know, time, uh, time was my enemy always, but uh, now time, there's no time for music at all. I'm 100% focused on the child and on my wife. Um, but, you know, it was something, it was something that I, I really wanted. Uh, it was something that, um, that came to my life. It, it's the best thing that happened to my life uh, for me and my wife. So... Now he's my inspiration and whatever I do, I do it for him. And he's the reason that I'm here. And he will be probably the reason that I will stop this thing. You know, one Whoa. day. One. <laughs> so uh, do you want to, to bring your wife and uh, your son to Brazil? Yeah, yeah, I have tried uh, one or two times, but uh, unfortunately because my wife, she's, uh, she works also in Greece. 
like an uh, office job, you know, nine hours per day. Uh, it's hard to find the right days. Also, the child now is a little bit, is a baby, you know, it's uh, 17 months. So it's a little bit hard to bring him uh, to Brazil, but yeah, definitely he needs to come. He needs to come. Also, my wife, she wants a lot, you know, to see, to live the experience of Brazil. So, and your, your wife came, came to Brazil? Or, uh, uh, never, no, no. Never? No. She had traveled with me uh, in Mexico back in, back in the old days, you know, in 2012. Uh, and, and all the tours that I do in Europe, you know, uh, France, Germany, uh, Italy, whenever I go. You know. And uh, what do you, do you think about your, your life and traveling, playing all over the world? But it's, it's part of the job. <laughs> You're laughing because you know that I don't like it. <laughs> Basically, it's part of the job, you know. I, unfortunately, I don't have the opportunity like the Brazilian uh, DJs that they are playing inside their country, which is one of the most uh, important countries in this scene, you know, Brazil nowadays. And there is so many parties, so many opportunities for them. Uh, for us, and uh, basically for me, because I live in Greece, we have only two, three, four, five parties per year that I can play. So uh, I need to travel. So with the success that High Profile brought to me, you know, um, yeah, I need to travel a lot outside uh, Europe, Brazil, Mexico. I have some uh, offers also from India, Australia, but we're still working on them. So yeah, man, it's hard, it's hard. For me, it's hard. Traveling is hard. She is on, off on another world. It's not the, the, the party world. Uh, you mean my wife? Yes. Yeah, she's totally outside. She, she heard uh, this kind of music only by me, you know, from the studio that I was playing. And in, in the first uh, time that she heard the music, she didn't realize what music it is. So I was trying to explain to her and she kind of liked it, you know. <laughs> she likes some tracks, <laughs> not everything. But how, how, uh, how, how you meet each other? Oh, um, it, was in, it was in Athens, you know, in Greece. We met in a, in a party, but not party, trans party, you know, in a, in a friend's house. And from the moment we uh, see each other, you know, it was like a, a crush, you know. A connection. Yeah, connection instantly. instantly, you know, it's 11 years ago. And, and did you play in, in this? No, 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 I was just a guest, you know. It was a party, not trans party, you know, it was like a pyjama party, let's say, you know, it yeah. was like a, a celebrity birthday, something, you know, nothing. Wow. In other country, in France? In no, in Athens, in Athens, oh. in Athens, in Greece. Do you want to speak about your childhood? I, I, kn I know you, you are a play basketball player uh, yeah. and, and you go to army, I went to army. Yes, basically in Greece you have to go to the army. I didn't went, you know, because I wanted to. Uh, <laughs> you, you have to go to the army uh, to serve your country. Uh, it's uh, back in the days in 2000, uh, I had to go 20 months. So it was almost two years of my life. Wow. Yeah. And um, I was in the Air Force. And yeah, so many stories, you know, from, from the <laughs> Army. But, we, you know, if I start, I will never finish. But it was two years of my life. I had a good experience because in the Air Force, you know, it's more easy than the Marines. So, um, yeah, I had, already all, I had already started to create some music back then. So the Army uh, cut a little bit the, the speed that I had on the studio. So, yeah. Uh, about my childhood, man, I was uh, I was a quiet guy, you know. I, I never really? caused any problems to my family. Um, my parents are divorced, you know, from uh, when I was seven years old. But I had uh, I had received a lot of love from both of them. Um, I was good in school, you know. I wasn't the super uh, <laughs> nerd, you know. But uh, I wasn't also a bad student, you know. I was studying. Uh, uh, and after after uh, after 18 years old, I went to the army and then some studies in uh, engineering. And basketball was always my life. I had um, I had a serious injury in my life also when I was playing in basketball. So this injury probably uh, stopped the the love that I had playing basketball professionally a little bit. So after the injury, I started to create music. So um, the one love, you know, replaced the other was something like this. Um, in, general, in general, I believe that I had a very quiet childhood, you know, nothing, nothing super. I never caused any problems to my parents or to friends or 
And in that time, you, you know psy trends. Uh, what is your music, uh, music preference okay, in, this, yeah. in your yeah. childhood? Basically, in Greece, psy trends came around 1992, 90, 93, trance and psy trends. Um, I was uh, already 13 years old back then. So yeah, I had already started to listen some, let's say, underground a little bit music. Um, yeah, the first project that came to my ears and I was, I, I said, wow, what is this? You know, it was KLF, probably you don't know them. They are from England and they were trying to, to promote something totally different to the to worldwide. You know, it was, it was amazing. I, I can put you some music after, after the interview so you can hear. Okay. And uh, for sure, Prodigy, you know, you know. Yeah, them. yeah, Prodigy, okay. But when they started, you know, uh, 1992, so instantly when I heard this underground projects, I said, wow, what is this? So I was deep inside this, uh, I, I followed the flow and uh, after with Scooter, with Carl Cox, Sven Vat, and yeah, after Cytrans came like Astral Projection or, yeah, if you ask me the click moment to my career that changed everything also was Asterix. <laughs> 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 and was always Asterix uh, in 1995 or six. I don't remember seven. I'm not sure with his first album, I Twy. So this changed everything. And I was in a presentation live when he came to Athens, and I was watching him, and I said, "Wow!" I never said I want to be he, I, I, to be him. You know, I, I didn't have started to create music back then. I was only a fan. And when I saw Asterix, I was wow. Yeah, this <laughs> is the music that I love. So yeah. From now, from back then, I started to follow Cytrans. How uh, you describe you? You, you are a produ like a producer and like yourself. Oh, Why can you describe hard. you? You mean uh, what about um, negative, positive? Yeah, I like? think three positive points and three negative points. That is very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to say the negatives is more easy? <laughs> the, the, the positives is hard, I don't know. Uh, uh, let's say that I'm... Um, as high profile, uh, the good things that I have done, I believe that I have, uh, I have helped many people from my country to make their own dream, you know, to, to start their own career. I have shown to the people that, um, you know, you can make your dream come true. It's not only by connections or by paying some things, you know, you can do this, you can pay and start the career. You know, uh, I started the project uh, with, uh, with romance, you know, I just gave my music, believing in this music, and it happened, the dream happened. So, the hard work that I have done as high profile, I believe, is the only thing that I can say. I have done so many bad moves uh, for my project, you know, I, I mentioned some, yeah. like, in social media and stuff. So... Now, as Tassos is super difficult to say. I don't know. I don't know. I, I have negative things a lot. <laughs> but the positives, I leave, uh, I leave this to the people to say, you know, the people that they know me. Do you remember your first gig in Brazil, your first presentation? Uh, what do you expect about Brazil and what do you re realize about the expectations in Brazil? Basically, uh, when I received uh, an email that they want to book me in Brazil, me and my wife, we were like in shock. She, really? She said to me, are you really going to go to Brazil? <laughs> are you going to Brazil? Are you sure? Are, are, is it safe? You know, we had some, some things, some discussions. And I, I said to her that, uh, yeah, I need to go because if someone needs to make a career, definitely needs to pass through Brazil because it's the most hottest the hottest country in the world, uh, the best fans, you know, so. So I took the decision and yes, the first party was in 2012, uh, if I'm wrong, no, it was in 2012. And uh, yeah, it was Sivan Eves Festival uh, with my friends there, Fernando, Tom, Kelly, you know, it, it was, uh, it was the first boom. I still remember this party. I, I, I didn't have expectations. Uh, I didn't knew what will happen. I played evening. I still remember the day that uh, it was uh, the 
1,000 people there. For me, it was huge because I never played in <laughs> such a big stage. Wow. And I still remember their reactions, you know, from the people. I went back to the room and I was watching the video that I had from this party. And I was I watched the video almost 1,000 times to see <laughs> the reactions from 1,000 people. You know, <laughs> I saw all the reactions. And yes, the first time that I saw the video that I had from Brazil, I cried. So wow. Yeah, it was from the tense, you know. Uh, what do you f what do you think about the the Brazilian crowd? So, <laughs> <laughs> what do you believe that I'm going to answer? <laughs> but you know already the answer. Uh, had some comments in 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 the other country in Europe about Brazilian crowd and uh, what, what, they're, what the they're saying. You don't know. Everybody's no, I, saying the same thing. Really? No, it's not. Is a is. Totally, it's the same no, opinion. No, it's, no, no, it's not the same thing. It's totally different. Yeah, I agree. Brazilians reacting more to a, a live set. It's not about, basically, it's not about playing during the, the parties. When you, it's, it, it starts when you announce a tour. When you announce a tour that you are coming to the country, man, you cannot imagine how many messages, you cannot imagine how many reposts, how many tags on Instagram, the, how many how many love you receive that please come we're expecting you and when you when you arrive to the airport there's people that recognize you in the airport even in the airport that that, that this, this thing cannot happen easily to europe you know it ha it has it has happened to me in europe like five times in 10 years but in brazil it had happened hundreds <laughs> times five years you know so um, it starts from the beginning and uh, when you arrive to the party people want to hug you to kiss you to give you gifts uh to make a photograph uh, you know and, and after comes the live we all know what happens when uh, all, all the djs are playing you you guys are giving the hundred percent of you you're totally enjoying the music and uh, the party's finishing then again photos and again uh, messages and post on Instagram, it's, I don't know, it's totally different from all the other countries. For sure, there are some other countries that they are doing the same, and we love the other countries. I love basically a lot some other countries, but man, Brazil is always in the heart of every DJ. And tell me about the, the gifts. Uh, do, what's your favorite gift gift gave from a Brazilian people? And the, the worst... <laughs> the worst the, gift? Uh, not worst, oh, but no worst uh, gift. The, the, the... Well, there's more strains, you mean, or... I, I was exotic. <laughs> Man, no, it's gifts. When I say gifts, I mean, like, they, they, they send me... They give me photographs of my family. They create photographs of my family, and they give me. They have, gi they have gave me some necklace. Uh, they have given me T-shirts. They have given me shoes written my name. Uh, they, have given, they have given me glasses, um, hats, um, I don't know, many things, man. I don't know, I, I, I cannot remember all, but uh, yeah, imagine, imagine this, a fan to love you and go, go to buy a gift and bring it to a guy from Greece into the party, it's huge, man, I, I, I see it, it's, I believe it's huge. And... Do, uh, do you have a, a funny situation with fans in Brazil? And yeah, there are some funny situations, yeah. There were some funny. Recently, let's say, uh, you, you were there in Soma. Yeah, yeah. Soma Festival, which was, wow, amazing party. Yeah, yeah. I party. really enjoyed it, basically. It was super party. Uh, there was a girl that was screaming, and she came to the stage. <laughs> I don't know if you saw her. She came to the stage screaming, like, I love you, I love you, I love you. And she removed all the cables. What? You didn't saw it? She removed the cables no. from the monitors. Wow. Uh, she removed the cable, the, my, my headphones. She removed the deck that I didn't use. And then she tried to remove also my laptop and my USB stick. But uh, my manager uh, ah. uh, saw her and instantly, you know, she grabbed, uh, he grabbed her and... Wow. And, yeah, that was recently, you know, before wow. two weeks, basically. And, yeah, many things, man, many things. Very funny stories. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, in this in this ambience and the parties, I uh, have much, uh, have some uh, much use of drugs, and not on the, the, the dance floor, but in the, all the stuff and all the in in our daily life and in, our, in the world. This is is a is a is a 
is a thing. It is here. Yeah, you know. It's something uh, do, uh, what do you think about the about the use about the the the, the people? Not the people, but the this culture and about this. I believe it's wrong to to combine drugs with psytrance music. Uh, mm. Drugs is something that can happen to every music, can happen to every society, to every country, to every city. Uh, it's something that is was always and uh, will be always, unfortunately. Yeah, I'm against drugs. I have expressed my opinions uh, before, again in interviews. Um, basically, as Tassos, I have never used drugs. Uh, I have tried once in my life marijuana, just once, just to see what it is. I didn't felt nothing, you know, it just it wasn't my thing. And uh, I have seen many people dying from drugs and uh, with the wrong use. Basically, I'm super against, you know. Uh, as about drugs being inside such a scene, you know, it's something that I hate. I hate it totally. Uh, it's so ironic to, to hear people saying that music is a drug, but at the end it's not. They need something more. This is, this is not good. Uh, I say to all the people that, um, you know, yes, music is a drug. Life by itself is a drug. Don't, you don't need chemistry to find a better world. That's my opinion. But for sure, I respect totally the people that they want to have to try uh, or they want to to make some drugs. I totally respect them. You know, I, I'm not an enemy of them. Uh, but uh, yeah, I feel a little bit unfair to say that drugs is only inside one scene. Don't say this. It's everywhere. It's in rock. It's in <laughs> dubstep. In I don't know. In Bunch a, of people. Uh, in every music, you know. Uh, a lot of people in side trans scene uh, uh, say the, the the drugs is interlaced, connected. connected. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's connected with everything. Uh, drugs is connected with everything. It's not connected with trans. Uh, basically, I know many people that they don't take drugs. Artists that they don't take, and also fans, people that are down and in the in the stage and they don't take drugs. I know. And I don't believe that the majority of the people is taking drugs. I don't believe. I believe the minority is taking drugs. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. Probably I'm wrong, but I see the good side of it. You know, I don't see that everybody, you know, everybody's taking drugs. Overlooking the, the, no. the good point. Of but it. we need to say that the people that they want to take drugs, I respect them. Uh, they know what they're doing, probably. I believe that they can handle it. I believe. And uh, I wish to them one day to stop. <laughs> because it's too boring, you know all of your life to take the same drugs all the time, you know, it's just stop. It's like smoking. You start smoking five, six years, seven, ten, and one day you need to stop. You know, you cannot smoke all of your life. That's my opinion. Interesting. And talking about drugs, I think that other good point to, to talk is about religion. Do you have a, any <laughs> faith or uh, what do you think about religion? Uh, do you think uh, there is a connection in psytrance and religion? You put all the hard uh, questions on me. In other interviews, <laughs> you're, you're asking about VSTs and <laughs> what's your favorite part and what's your favorite VST? Mm. Yeah. No, no, no I'm, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It's a good question. Uh, <laughs> man, you know, uh, religion is something very unique to every people. You know, uh, every country has her, its own religion. Uh, yeah, I'm a religious guy. I believe in God. Um, in Greece, the main religion is Christian uh, Orthodox. And uh, but you know, after 38 years, I have realized, and traveling so much and speaking with different religions, I have realized that uh, the only religion that exists is love. And uh, that must be the, the flag for everybody, you know, love, respect, and um, that's it. My, my, my point of view, you know, I, I'm a religious guy, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, you know, but, you know, I'm not a fanatic. Love, I believe, is my religion. Do you think uh, 
have a connection Christianity and the music in the, the Christianity have a connection uh, side trends in this, in, in this point the only connection that music can have with a religion is that music is a religion probably uh, music is something that can bring you joy can heal you also there is a, there are some occasions that music there is a healing music you know that makes people that they have some diseases to be cured uh, music makes you cry music uh, makes you laugh music is in uh, ev music is everywhere music is inside every people so we can say in a way that music is a religion by itself not side trans music music in general so I believe that's the connection that music has to the religion. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. So, uh, talking about music, uh, what is your favorite track in the moment? Is that side trance track or all gen all genre? No, it's, uh, it's... I heard recently um, in a party the remix that GMS have, uh, have done before three years, I'm not sure, from, uh, from a track that that I love Eric from Eric Bridge, yeah. Bridge, uh, which was a track, Opus. Opus, exactly. So um, yeah, I'm going to also include this track uh, as the end of my set because I, I super love it. Did you play in Soma this track? I, I played, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I played it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in your daily life, uh, you you want to, do you love to listen side trends or? Love to uh, to listen odd gen uh, genres. What your your preference? preference uh, yep. Yeah. No, I don't listen psytrance. My only connection with psytrance um, was before two three years when I was listening. Uh, yeah, I, I, I always check the new releases always, and I was pressing all the only the demos. You know, from Beatport, you know, checking uh, the thirty second one minute to check a little bit the track. That was my only connection with Psytrance. And uh, whenever, but I, I need to be honest, whenever I hear something that I really, really like in the demos, I'm going on YouTube or Spotify yeah, and check the full track. But my, that's my only connection. Uh, during the day uh, in my house, especially when, when I'm in Greece, almost never we, we're listening you know, to Psytrance or even trance or even something electronic. Um, me and my wife, we are more to um, Greek folklore music. We are listening, you know, uh, more ethnic uh, folklore music. Do you think uh, this, uh, this this way to, to, to listen uh, help you, helps you or...? No, it doesn't help. <laughs> it doesn't help at all. No. Really? Because you, if you don't listen what, uh, what what is happening to your job, you know, if you don't listen to ideas uh, where music is going, you know, uh, it keeps you a little bit out of the trance reality, of the side trance reality. So whenever I make music, yeah, probably it's unique, but um, I don't believe that I, it, it, help, it helps me a little bit in the studio. Yeah, it's a little bit like this. Um, are you feeling happy today playing? Yes, I feel happy uh, that uh, they invite me to a country to play. It's an honor, basically. I don't feel only happy. It's an honor for me. Um, yes, I feel happy when I make people uh, happy. when I make people happy. I'm happy when a track of mine uh, is uh, is out and people is buying it and they put it in top ten, top twenty charts on Beatport and stuff. Yeah, I'm happy. But I'm not happy when I'm traveling so many days and I'm away from my family. Unfortunately, uh, I was putting always Tassos uh, more than high profile. That was the obstacle to the project. I care more for my family and the time that I have uh, there in Greece uh, rather to the project. You know. uh, you Did you think about your stop and yeah, many times. <laughs> really? Yeah. It, ha it has passed many times from my mind. And Even before you came here, <laughs> I, I said that, should I announce now the, the stuff? You know, it would be good. It would be good with an interview, you know, it would be good for the interview, basically. <laughs> <laughs> like exclusive high profile stuff. But yeah, I have thought so many times. And why you don't stop yet? Uh, 
I have to be honest. Please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to be honest. The first thing is the money. The first thing is the money. Uh, but also, there are some occasions that the love of the people keeps you alive. Because I'm receiving some messages on Instagram and Facebook, which, man, it, there are, you cannot imagine. You know, I have received a message from a mother that says that your music healed my child. You know, and she was, she was from Mexico. And thank you very much. God bless you. Or there are some mothers that their child want to be a DJ. And when they heard me in some interviews, that, uh, my opinion about drugs and stuff, their, their child were um, both, both sons. They were DJs and they were having some drugs issues. And uh, because they love me, uh, the mother sends me messages that uh, my my son stopped using drugs because of you because you are wow. an idol for them you know wow. so yeah those moments are keeping me in this job and for sure the love the love from the people man wow for sure <laughs> and talking about your your influence uh, do you receive did you receive the the UNESCO prize uh, yeah. about your uh, music culture in Greece and tell us about uh, about it this this award and what it represent to you basically I received an email from them and uh, I thought it was a joke <laughs> 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 I, I couldn't believe this uh, because it was huge man huge for me huge for my family and when I, I received the e email uh, I put it in the trust in the spam basically uh, and then I received a call and um, they told me that they want to um, uh, award me for my contribution to the Greek uh, cultural heritage, you know, as a fresh new producer. And uh, I said to them, yeah, it's an honor for me. And uh, yeah, it, it was big, it was big. It was something huge. I went there, I get the, the, the word and it's UNESCO. I never expect that. So, so yeah. Tell me about uh, tell me about the, the producers for all the producers who, who watching you, watching us. Uh, what is your platform? What software? What uh, do you like it? And what is your favorite plugins to produce? I have to say to the young producers that the platform doesn't. Uh, it's it's not the main thing. You know, all the platforms are doing an amazing job. Uh, the guy that runs the platform makes a difference, you know, it's the producer that makes a difference, not the platform. Uh, I'm using Cubase uh, almost all of my life and uh, I, I find it easy for me, you know, I feel comfortable with the environment of Cubase. And um, about plugins, definitely I believe Contact is um, a major plugin with uh, amazing libraries. And uh, the interf I, I super love the interface of Serum. I use a lot. So these two, I believe, nowadays. But also there are so many, you know, Silence, Fire, Avenger, Omnisphere, Diva, so many that a new producer can use. And when you produce, uh, you start from the drop, the music, or the, the intro, the uplifting? Uh, or is there a creative process? First, I open, uh, I open a MIDI channel and I put a piano. <laughs> so I need first to play the harmonies and the chords. I create melody, even not the main melody. I create melodies, I create harmonies. And uh, then I put this to the project and I see where this will go. No, no, no I don't use the drops uh, <laughs> first, no. no I don't use and uh, tell him, telling me about harmony, is okay, our harmony. main track uh, in ever in Haves in Brazil. I love this track and uh, we feel a different energy in the, 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 the dance floor. And uh, 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 what is the, 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 the process of the, the production of the harmony? And you expected that the harmony makes success? No, not even close. Uh, I have a good story for harmony. I was traveling with Liquid Soul going to Mexico. I was traveling economy, he was traveling business, <laughs> uh, but it was five years ago. And uh, he invited me back to the business to, to have a little bit chat and uh, had a very interesting chat. And he said to me that the secret lies 
on the simplicity that sometimes we're trying too hard to make a good track uh, putting so many channels uh, creating so difficult melodies and uh, I took this on my mind I went back to Greece and I just used the harmonies of uh, A note and E note and um, yeah, I put triplet <laughs> <laughs> because it works <laughs> worldwide. So yeah, when I did it, I, I never expect what will happen. I have to be honest. I, I didn't say that. Wow, this is a hit. You know, no, I didn't say that. I said I said this to, for other tracks, but nothing happened. Uh, but I didn't say that for harmony. But yeah, it was it was uh, a surprise for me also. And you, you are property of the 1DB Records, uh, your label. Yeah. And uh, what is the idea behind the, this, this label and what projects you are, you are supporting it? Basically, my label is Bluetunes. Bluetunes. Um, I'm releasing all of my music there and uh, to some other uh, labels also. Recently, I'm going to, re to release uh, a new track of mine in Alteza Records of Vini Vici. Wow. Uh, I, but the idea of opening a label was only for helping the young producers, the, the new producers. You know, I opened 1DB Records. I am the owner of 1DB Records just to help the, the new producers to start to make the first steps in the music industry, to give them something more than just a release, to give them some tips, some infos about management, you know. Wow. So that was the, the whole story behind 1DB. I, I never... I, I never wanted to become the best label, no, that wasn't the idea. The idea was to help the young producers to, to make the first steps and to giving some more infos about what they have to deal in this uh, industry. Giving the, the structure. The structure, the uh, yeah, infos, information, everything. Yeah. And uh, do you imagine high profile in the big stages like Tomorrowland, like other festivals, commercial festivals all over the world? Basically, my music is commercial, so and also it's more trancey. You know, a lot of uh, vocals, women vocal singing, a lot of melodies, trance melodies. So yeah, if you ask me, I believe that it's a dream that I really want to live. You know, Tomorrowland or Dream State or State of Trance. There are stages that yeah, I really want. I, I really want to go, but I, I'm not in a hurry. You know, I can wait. Even if nothing happened, if I never play there. I'm uh, super happy with the stages that I, I play already. Um, what is your plans uh, about the future of High Profile and Tassos? The future plans of Tassos and your life? Basically, these two plans are totally separated. <laughs> <laughs> If I you ask that. High Profile, the future is to create better music, to um, travel to more uh, countries, to reach more fans, to spread my music worldwide. I really hope to play one day in some main stage uh, stages like we mentioned before. And uh, if you ask Tassos, Tassos wants to stop all this. <laughs> <laughs> so my future plan is to stop music, it, it ask Tassos. So these things are a little bit... Uh, Yeah. Is one side uh, fights with yeah, the, 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 the devil and the angel. You know? <laughs> and what do, f you, what do you feel about it? It's the, one side have continues and makes two sides and, and grow up and yeah. uh, more bigger, and the other side, family and whole, the, all the, li the life behind the, the stage. Yeah, I feel not good. <laughs> it's, I, not uh, good. it's not good. And uh, how you you decide to how I what I, what I will uh, decide or how I make the decisions? Yeah, yeah. yeah how I make the decisions? Well, well, Man, I don't know. I don't know. Probably with you only live in yeah, day going, after day. I'm going with the flow. You know, if something good <laughs> happens with music, <laughs> uh, whenever something good happens, I'm going with the high profile plans. <laughs> whenever something bad happens, I said, now I will stop. <laughs> no, it's Tassos that's speaking. Uh, I don't know, it's something that probably I have to be honest, I will discuss it with my family. You know, my family is the, is the ones that they will tell me, okay, now probably you need to slow down a little bit and probably you need to stop. 
Wow. Talking about the the side train scene, uh, what do you see? Uh, what do you think about the the future of the side train scene? Is being more commercial and the underground is is in in your in your space and in your culture and your philosophy and the commercial scene is is bring more, is a bigger in the market. What do you think? What do you think about the the future of the side train scene? I don't believe that there is only these two options. You know, I believe that uh, some part of the side trans scene in India will definitely need to go more commercial. I totally believe this because uh, it's it's not it's not fair to say that we love this music, we love this scene, and we we want it only for us. We want it only for us. Okay? No, no, no one else will listen to this music. No. We want also this music to be spread worldwide, and yeah, if needed, in the most big stages. And if some some artists, some parties, some labels wants to go a little bit more underground, yeah, for sure they can go underground. Uh, if you ask me, Cytrons music stayed enough years underground. It was underground for many, many years, and I believe it's time to rise. That's my opinion because it's, as I said in the beginning, it's unfair to have this music only for us. All the people in the world need to understand that this music has come to stay. And what do you think about the, the numbers of the, the, the charts and millions and millions and plays and, and other tracks and artists, the, the whole war to the popularity, to, to being the most rated in the chart? And what do you think about this? The, this scenario, this this event. Uh, man, behind the numbers, there are people. You know, behind the numbers, uh, there is there is always a fan. You know, don't we, we don't need to to watch the as digits. You know, if an artist has one million artists and I uh, fans and I have uh, one hundred thousand, it's not about numbers. It's behind these numbers, there are people. Um, now, if you ask me if this is the main, main thing, no, it's not the main thing because I, I, or I, I know basically artists that they have so many good numbers in their social media and uh, some others that they don't have, but still they are better than the guys that they have more fans. You know, let's say we know, we know artists that they have millions of fans on their social media, but are they better than Asterix? They're not. You know, some guy can have one million fans on his Instagram. Asterix doesn't have one million fans on his Instagram. But are they better than Asterix? No. <laughs> they can be more famous at the moment. But better they cannot be. You know. So that's my opinion about numbers. And uh, talking about the artists, um, what is the three favorite artists in Psytrance? I think ah, in three in, in Psytrance. In Psytrance and three three artists in all all genres. In all genres, there are above and beyond Army Baburan and um, oh. Paul Van Dyke for me. Trans. More trans. For Psytrance, definitely my my uh, hero was. Always Asterix for me. For sure, Vinny Vici. The things that they have done to our scene is uh, are amazing. They have helped so much. And uh, as a third guy, I could say Liquid Soul for me, at least. And so, what is the relationship with Brazilian producers, and uh, how do you feel producing these Brazilian artists? Uh, uh, I have a good relationship with almost everyone. Uh, I have done already some collaborations with Ground Base, as you know. Uh, we released it in Lutheans. I have done two collaborations with uh, Vegas. Yes. And one collaboration with uh, Danger. And uh, yeah, always, uh, always, it's always helpful, you know, to have uh, new ideas and fresh ideas from the young uh, children that they are making. Uh, Amazing music, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I totally respect them. They have done huge steps to their careers, 
the, the good thing is that they are not only talented, uh, the good thing is that they are also very good personalities. Uh, they have grew up all over these years and uh, they have done amazing steps in uh, Brazilian Cytron scene. It, they have helped so, so much the Brazilian Cytron scene. Do you think Brazil in the, in the future uh, can't be a, a new Israel like the like the Israel in the 90s, Brazil is changing the, the, the whole worldwide science train scene? But well, it's hard to tell. I really, I, I cannot answer, I don't know. Basically, uh, Israel is Israel, it's the motherland, you know, it's the holy land of trans. <laughs> so many <laughs> artists comes from Israel. And uh, not only many, you know, the best artists probably comes from Israel. So I don't know if Brazil is going to be ever Israel because Brazil is Brazil. You know, they have uh, their own mentality, cultural history. And um, I believe it, there are some potentials because it's huge. And uh, so many parties, so many fans, the trans scene he here is, is super awesome and big. So yeah, probably it can happen, but I really cannot tell, you know, I don't know. So only on the future. On the, the future will show. You know. <laughs> so uh, in this moment we have uh, some fast questions okay, and I, I tell them, uh, I tell them the, the two options and you... I choose one of two? Or it is, so okay. You choose one of two can and... I both of them or not? Only one? Uh, I, can I, I choose a third option or...? I prefer it all of two, but one you, you have a, a okay. good explanation about it, the third one okay, or okay. The, the both of Let's do it. So, uh, wine or beer? Uh, beer. And beach or mountain? Beach. Really? Yeah. Uh, São Paulo or Athens? Atenas? <laughs> Atenas. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, there are so many similarities because there are big cities, uh, there are some ugly buildings, you know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I have to choose my city, you know, it's at the... So, Facebook or Instagram? Instagram. Really? Um, full-on or progressive trends? Only progressive trends. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Don't like full-on? I used to like when I was young. Now, you know, when, you, when you're getting older, the BPM are going lower. <laughs> uh, Neymar or Ronaldinho Gaúcho? Uh, is Neymar or what? Ronaldinho Gaúcho. Ronaldinho Gaúcho. Ronaldinho. Uh, Ronaldinho. You, you have a photo of Ronaldinho. Yeah, what? I found him uh, when he was play, <laughs> playing in Atletico Mineiro. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I saw him and I said, man, we need to make a picture. He said, man, yeah, let's take a picture. And, and I told him that I'm coming from Athens, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. But uh, he don't know what is... Uh, me, you know, he didn't nah. know me. For, <laughs> I for don't sure. know. I knew him. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Ronaldinho no. Gaúcho likes Psytrance, I don't no, know. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's an idol. He told me that he was making his own music. He had like a yeah, band. It, he told me, and then, man, you're a DJ, cool. Um, I, have a, I have a band that's playing some Brazilian music. He's yeah. all the places, girl. He's bro. A, yeah, yeah. All, all the places. He's amazing. Yeah, probably one of the best players uh, ever in Brazil. That's my opinion. Good opinion. Um, playing daytime or nighttime? Daytime. Really? Um, Cubase or Ableton? Cubase. Cubase, but FIFA or Pro Evolution Soccer? <laughs> it's it's the game, right? Yeah, yeah, the, the uh, video game. Yeah, the, P, no, the Pro Evolution Soccer. Why? Because uh, I, I remember the configurations that <laughs> they were different in FIFA and I was always confusing, you know, <laughs> and I was so lazy to go in the configurations to change the, the, the buttons, so I prefer FIFA. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> the only reason. Uh, big parties or small pa parties? Uh, it, it depends, you know, I prefer, I prefer to play in a good small party rather to play in a big bad party. So yeah, that's my... my um, uh, a favorite word in Portuguese? Uh, picanha. Only the word you lo <laughs> love? <it>? Churrascaria. <laughs> 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 and hay profile or pie profile? King profile or 
father, father papa uh, from profile papa profile no i'm not king you know i love democracy so i prefer <laughs> father profile <laughs> uh techno or high tech techno me low bpm or high bpm uh man only high bpm <laughs> <laughs> High BPN, high profile is the, the perfect the combination, exactly. I think. So, Tassos, uh, I'm really appreciate your presence right here. Thank you so much for talking to us. Muito obrigado. All say, the best. Say some words in Portuguese for uh, our fans. Uh, like, muito obrigado. <laughs> Você é o me, meu família. Olha. And uh, eu te amo você país. <laughs> eu amo seu país. Seu país. É isso aí, pessoal. Essa foi a nossa conversa, o primeiro episódio do Talking High, aqui na High BPM, com High Profile. Continue acompanhando nossas redes sociais, porque em breve nós teremos aí novas entrevistas com esse novo formato. E é isso aí. Tamo junto, muito obrigado e até a próxima.